G'day, Keith here. Thank you for joining me again. I uh, thought I'd do a another sort of personal video on the life of a fly-in, fly-out worker as I follow my washing. Uh, I got a few emails and um, comments on that last fly-in, fly-out video about how to get into the mines and uh, what it's like. I got some really good feedback from you guys, uh, not just in the comments that you can see there, but also um, via the email. And um, if you haven't already checked out, I've got a, a Facebook page where you can message me as well. It's, uh, it's called Chilling with Keithy. If you wanna have a look on Facebook, I'll put the link up there somewhere. Um, so what I wanted to talk about today was how to get into the mines. I've had, that's probably the biggest question I've had. How to get into the mines. How do I do it? What do you do? What do you need to do? Uh, a lot of people say that you need to know somebody to get in. You don't need to know anybody to get into the mines. Um, that's not my experience anyway. I mean, it depends what kind of position you're going for. At the end of the day, um, a solid recommendation is always a good thing. But um, you're going to get in on your own merit because if you get in on someone else's name and something goes wrong with you, mess up for some reason, that's on their name as well. It doesn't reflect very well. So I'll tell you a bit about the story of how I got into the mines. Don't mind me, Joss. There's no holes, I swear. So, back when I was um, 18, I had a mate, Tony. G'day, Tony, if you're watching. I still got him as a mate, funny enough. He's still with me. Um, and he went for a job with a contracting company. Um, and he'd asked me to go along with him when he chucks his resume in and finds a little bit more about it. And he was green to mining and so was I. I was working at a pizza hut at the time. And I was, yeah, I was only young, fresh out of school. So I said to him, yeah, mate, I'll, I'll come along with you and we'll see what it's all about. And that is how I got uh, my start in mining. Just on the topic of socks, these are 15 years old and they get punished, these things. Good socks, they mean a lot. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we went along and um, funny enough, the first place that we ended up coming as contractors was out here where I work now. And um, oh, neither of us had any idea. We walked into the plant and just were, were absolutely amazed. We're in awe of, um, of the size, the sheer size of it and what goes on. We had no idea that that pipe goes there. And you know, it was all such a, um, a blur. And we were basically told, this is what you gotta do. You gotta go over here, fix this, repair that, whatever. We had no idea, we had no trade skills or anything. Um, but we managed to fumble our way through, I think it was a 10 day shutdown we came out for then. Um, and so, you know, that's the start of the process, getting a foot in the door. So if you wanna get into the mining game, you gotta find a way in. Um, so you can look on websites uh, in Australia, you've got seek.com, that's a pretty good one. Uh, and you might find that um, there's a job going that that says, you know, not, not a lot of experience required or no forklift ticket required or things like that. That's a good way to get in. And don't knock me for the way I'm folding this stuff too, if you're OCD about that. I'm not doing it for the queen. Um, so that's a start there. You could also go through a contracting company, um, just to name a few, but not all of them. Obviously you've got mobs like Dawson's and um, over in Western Australia, Barminko are pretty big. Just depends what you want to do. So you need to um, you need to sort of find out what you want to do in the mine. There are a lot of roles um, from stuff that um, like even spare parts interpreters at say your local Toyota dealership could do. So you could warehouse. You could do some warehousing. Um, you could be a cleaner if you you know any way in the door you can. There are people that work in the plant, such as myself. I work in fixed plant. And then you've got underground miners, you've got, you've got truck drivers in the haul trucks. There's, there's a whole heap of things. So first thing you need to do is find out what you want to do um, and where you want to go with that. If you're at a management level, then potentially you could, you don't even have to work on the floor. You could go and, and become a, a superintendent or something along those lines, even if it's maybe an accounting superintendent or something like that. Um, so the, the way that I found it quite good to get in was through a contracting company. Uh, and it was very lucky. So we, we came out here. This was the first place that I came. Um, and we ended up coming back for a couple of shutdowns throughout that year. And uh, that was really good. That was a good foot in the door. I started to make relationships on site here with people who were 
I was working with directly who actually worked for the company. Uh, so they, they got to know me a little bit, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with them, you, you form that kind of relationship. And then I went out to um, a couple of other mines with, um, with Tony, with the old mate Tony and this contracting company. And we were doing things, again, all of these things were well without, without, outside of my uh, realm of skill. I, I had no mechanical trade. I didn't know anything. I didn't know the first thing about rebuilding a pump or things like that. But anyway, we had a go and that's, that's a good thing. You need to have a go. And we ended up coming back here again. So we did, I think we did four shutdowns out here in the space of about 12 months. And in that time, we developed a few good relationships with the people here to the point where I thought I'd sit down and talk with one of them, which happened to be the superintendent. Um, and he was a very good bloke. He was very easy to chat to. And they all are, these guys are people at the end of the day, and you've got to remember that. And sometimes it's luck and sometimes it's not, but in talking to this superintendent, he said, um, he said, I like your work, Keith. You're good, you rock up, you do what you've got to do, you go above and beyond. He said, how would you like a position with us? And that right there, my friends, is history for me. Um, so obviously what I showed was that oh, I'd come to work, I do my work, I do a good job, I'm friendly, I'm approachable, I'm, you know, all of those things working in my favour to the point where they wanted to take me on, which is good. It's in a, in a way, it's sort of like um, headhunting yourself making yourself an asset, and that's what you gotta do. And I didn't go and, um, I didn't go out looking for that. Initially, I didn't even think, oh, maybe I should talk to these guys and get a job. Um, that would be good. So, that's how I got in. What I will say too, if you are getting uh, recommended for a position by a mate, um, make sure you do right by your mate. And, um, you know, come to work every day, do what you've gotta do and keep your nose clean, because at the end of the day, that person's word is what got you in the door. So if you screw up or if you're always having incidents or not turning up to work, things like that, then you're not making that person look really good. And that'll have an impact on their um, career as well because people talk in the mining industry. So keep that in mind. If you've got a, um, a long distant friend from seven years ago that you saw at a party that you sort of remember their name, I wouldn't ask them for a reference to get in because they probably don't know you well enough and be honest, even if they say they're gonna recommend you, they're probably not going to. So don't get your hopes up on that. Best advice, go in as a contractor. Establish relationships, work hard, do what you've gotta do, and then um, see what you've got from there. But always keep your eye out on those websites to see if, um, if there are any jobs going because that's, that's your ticket in especially if you've been out there as a contractor. So you've got, I'm in Western Queensland, you've got Mount Isa, you've got the Bowen Basin, you've got Coal, you've got all the way down through Rocky, Moranbar, Emerald, all of that kind of stuff. I don't know a lot about Western Australia. I, I, know, that, I know a bit about it, but not locations as such. Um, you've got a lot of coal in New South Wales. Not too familiar with Victoria. I know that there's hard metal in South Australia. So that's your copper, your gold, things like that, excuse me. But at the end of the day, um, you need to go in with a plan. So you need to go, okay, this is what I want to do. If you want to work underground, good for you. A lot of dollars in underground. People always talk about drillers and that is a, that's a, a good paying job. But at the end of the day, if you're just chasing dollar signs and doing work that you don't, you don't know anything about and that's probably not interesting to you, you're going to fail at that. So keep in mind, um, don't go just chasing the dollar signs. You wanna get in and, and do something that you like doing. I mean, I like working on cars, as you've probably seen if you, um, if you watch my videos. So I'm a bit of a mechanically minded person. I like to use my hands. I like something that's gonna keep me going. Um, I do like to think. So that's where my job really suits me as well. Um, you also get these, these people that are like fly-by-nighters in the mining industry. Um, same with oil and gas and, and fertilizer and things like that and construction. Uh, there are a lot of people who sometimes just want to chase the dollar signs. So they'll go to a mine site, they'll work there for six months. I'm going, yeah, I've got a better offer, you know, here. Go work there for six months, I've got a better offer there. And they just keep moving around. And that's all good if that's your cup of tea. Uh, just keep in mind, uh, bouncing around like that, there's not a lot of job security. So you can go between the big mining companies 
and you could end up on good money with a small one. It can be a very small one, but there is also a risk associated with that. As seen with the uh, coronavirus, uh, a lot of people got laid off, contractors lost their jobs, things like that. You need to, to sort of balance where you want to go in life. If you want to just chase dollar signs, that's all good. Um, yeah, but have your focus before you start, before you get in. Keep your eyes on the, on the job network and uh, see what's out there. Thanks for watching. If you want to have a chat to me one-on-one -on -one without all of the comments down here, feel free to jump over to Facebook and um, Chilling with Keithy. I'll put a link up here in the description and probably put something on the screen there, no doubt, as well. Um, and you can just chat to me. I've had blokes from overseas talking to me about getting jobs in the mines here in Australia. Um, I've had wives who are having problems at home. Um, if you watched my last video, there was old mate was having some dramas. He's um, finally got that sorted, which is really good. Uh, no one's immune from that, but anyway. Keep your eyes peeled, guys. And yeah, if you want to chat, feel free. Otherwise, appreciate your time. Have a good one.